Um, I met his mom back in oh late 70s. We got hooked up. Had our first kid, Christopher, shortly after that. We moved from one location to another. And at the second location, we had our second child, Brandon. And four months after Brandon was born, he died of uh, crib death or sudden infant death syndrome. At that point, uh, the state assigned therapist suggested that we don't try and have a, another child because it may not work out so well. But we kind of ignored that and Nick was conceived. And that's when it all started. I did this documentary because I wanted to share my journey with the world before it was too late. My whole childhood, to even this very moment, I always felt like I was a little different or odd in comparison to everybody else I knew or anybody else I would be around. I didn't know if I was crazy for thinking like that or if it was a normal thought process that, that maybe you know, other people didn't even bring up or express. I don't know. Then I got to thinking, if I am right, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And what do I do with these emotions? See, there was only one thing that really got me able to at least portray this facade of normalcy. And that was my music. Everybody has a story. This is mine. After some complications and substance abuse, we got a divorce. Um, at which point his mom went in, because I had already been in, I already put myself in treatment in middle, mid 80s. And uh, went on a trip to Mexico with my brother. And when I came back, I was really disappointed in what I saw, how the kids were being cared for by their mom. So I scooped the kids up and I took them away. And um, it wasn't long at all after that that, that Robin had admitted herself into uh, a treatment facility. And <laughs> turns out she never left the place for 22, 23 years. Mom and dad uh, got divorced and stuff like that. And they had some, you know, issues like most families do, struggles and stuff like that. After we lost Nick's brother and we had Nicholas, they sent Nicholas home with us and he had to be on a monitor for 24 seven for the first year of his life, just to make sure that all of his vitals were good. A few years after that, when Nick was showing interest in music, a lot of interest in music, I did what I could to try to support that. I mean, I wasn't there all the time because their mom had custody, of course, but um, I would start by Maybe buying some music CDs, different types of music, you know, to expand his music experience, his music listening experience. Um, and he actually started writing lyrics down and really started to get into it. But as time went on, you know, his music was still always something, you know, anything that he could grab and pick up and try to make some type of music with, he would, he would work on trying to make different kinds of music. He really started to get pretty good. He started involving um, his buddy Ace and a bunch of other friends. Like he, his dad would invest in, his dad would, his dad would buy shit, you know what I'm saying? Like his, he had a dad that was, he was in the streets and his dad would come back with something, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you already know if you a nigga in the streets and you got kids, you come back with something. His dad would come back with studio shit. Picked up a computer from a friend of mine. 
mm, what, Fife, Federway, and uh, brought it to the boys, and that's the first computer they had. And shortly thereafter, because he was into his music so much, bought him the Fruity Loops program. When Rain, when Rain first, uh, when we made the, when he made his first beat, when we first got Fruity Loops, now he don't even fuck with Fruity Loops. But uh, when we first got Fruity Loops, man, he made the, the first day my guy, we got the shit, my, my guy made a slap. To me, it was incredible. It was, it was better than Timberland, Jermaine Dupree. Them was the hottest producers back then, Timberland, Jermaine Dupree, if you ask me. But uh, Andre, you know what I mean? It was hotter than any of that shit to me when I heard it, cause this is my guy making the beat and just sound ridiculous. It sounds crazy. Which he learned pretty quick. And grew and grew with it until he changed to other programs. And he's really something to watch today. Christmas, his mom decided you know, I'm gonna get him this uh, plastic guitar that was had plastic strings and you couldn't tune it. And I said, absolutely not. And she said, well, he's just a little boy, you know, and it's just a toy guitar. And I said, well, what good is a toy guitar if you can't tune it and you can't make it sound like anything? All he's gonna do is get disinterested in the uh, playing the music because he can't play anything. He's gonna think it's him and not, not the instrument that he has. So I made sure that we got him a real guitar for Christmas. And um, he took that guitar and he started learning how to play it. And every chance he got, he would sit down after school or on the weekends and he'd play his guitar and play for us. And and he just, uh, he just loved the music and eventually got him a keyboard and he started expanding on the keyboard and started playing more and more and learning how to play keyboards and, and how to play the drums on the keyboards and the guitar and putting together music. Taught himself how to play instruments, taught himself how to play the piano. Like, fucking most people can't even teach themselves to read. This guy's playing the piano, playing the guitar, he could probably play the drums. I think I'm seeing him play the flute one time, like that shit, like who can do that? You know, and he picks it up so quick. But as Nick was growing up, he got interested in playing guitar, so I started teaching him a little bit of music and stuff like that. And uh, he really got interested in it, which was good for me, because I, I really love to teach. So he, uh, he, he just started to pick it up, and, and gradually he started moving into a direction a little bit different than what I would do, but that's all good. For a while there, he was getting more and more into just the rap scene of music and making making songs that all sounded the same. And I would push him and push him and say, you have more talent than that. Why would you just do what the little bit of talent is that you have? We'd go to picnics and things and I'd have my karaoke system and Nick would get out there and he'd sing, take me out to the ball game. and eventually uh, really liked a Buddy Holly song that uh, it doesn't matter anymore and he loved singing that song and he and I would sing that song together and get him on TV more and, and just uh, he kept going and growing more and more into his music. So 1999 I think we moved in to uh, the trailer park home right off Camp Meridian. Um, I lived there until the end of high school. I moved out, moved to California. Immediately, my room was turned into a studio. I had no say in it. I don't even know what happened to all my stuff, but that's uh, that's what happened. I mean, so there was no break in his in his grind. There was just, I got my room. You don't get a room anymore when you come home. Your ass is on the couch. We got a studio, and they would just wrap in the closet. He literally was in a closet that's, I don't know, three feet by six feet, maybe seven, that he foamed out and turned into a booth. And at the time, that shit was legit. <laughs> we were like, okay, you step in there and it sounded like a booth. And at the time we didn't know, but this guy was doing big things. And Cass would come and go and you'd meet all these people. Most of them were trash. He always stood out. 
even at a young age when I when I thought it was corny, he always stood out. And I, it sounds biased because that's my brother, but the real shit. He's he was always talented. He's always putting the flows together better. The lyrics were just were better, and you know his sound was better. And he was able to make all his own beats, so he wasn't relying on anybody for the music. He had it on lock. I remember the Saturday nights, Friday nights. Parents would go out to do some karaoke. He would invite the homies over and we'd use the, the home stereo karaoke. And this guy was having everything from, you know, Friday nights, just hanging out and spitting random nothings to actual battles going down at his house, which was crazy. But it was dope. It was like it was like you. We never thought it was gonna snowball into what it is today. That's how we record our song. We record the tape. You know what I'm saying from CD to tape. You know what I'm saying. We record our little joint. That was our studio. It was the karaoke machine that came from <clears throat> his mom them and them, him his mom and Cordell being into that karaoke shit. So I mean that's that's kind of how we was recording. That's kind of how we got into doing music at an early age. And at first we we broke a couple mics. I remember recording, but or not me personally, but I was always there. <laughs> and they were all Nick and the other artists were recording on on a headphone. Because if you use the one side on the headphone, you can use it as a mic. And we figured out how when the mic broke and we had nothing else to use, and we're like, oh, this works. And we literally used that until we had enough money to buy another mic, which is crazy, but it worked. And um, at the time there was tape, so we we're like, you know, ain't no DVDs or no CDs or anything like that, and definitely wasn't no streaming. So we were just making, they were just making tapes. They had stacks of tapes, which is, you know, songs, Friday night sessions, and all sorts of stuff. He, he really got into uh, producing and, and got into the computer and, and stuff like that, and uh, doing stuff in music that I couldn't do. But um, it, it was really, really, um, really a lot of fun being there for him. I still remember when he was in his mom's basement and had a bunch of different kids that were aspiring to be artists. How he arranged or orchestrated when they came in, when they didn't, when the music came in, when it didn't. It was really pretty impressive for a kid his age. So he's always had an artistic mindset. And, I, and that's one thing I do know, he's been consistent with that. He's a, he's a true artist at heart, that's for sure. That's how uh, a lot of the little, the click shit form that we would be forming, like PTG and all that other little shit. Like it was on some rap shit, but it was on some click shit too. You know what I mean? We all had brands and shit. Niggas couldn't really get no tattoos, so niggas got all, all got branded. You know what I mean? Rain's been rain since then. That's what, that's what, that's what Rain got the name. I've been ace. I've always been ace. I came out the womb ace. A little after we arrived and he was already in the trailer park, we had a thing called v, uh, PTG. And that was just our, our the close homies that were in the in circle, I guess. Cause we always had our friends that, you know, you, the friends you had at school and whatnot, but then you had the real friends. So we had our group and it's funny because at the time we didn't know it. We were like, yeah, the PTG is our little group we made. But looking back, everybody at school thought, we, <laughs> thought that it was a real, real deal gang. Like we're out here just thugging. And it was funny. We we're like, okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll ride with that. It was funny. It was funny for us, but we were, it really was like us, the homies and Nick, you know, making videos. Rain's been rain since then. We've been on this shit since then. You know what I mean? It was play the game back then. Now you send it, we just took the T out. It's an M. It's Pyramid Music Group. That's the same shit. It's still PTG. It's still, it's still, it's just still a G in it. It's always gonna be a G if it's me in it. But at the same time, we just, you know what I mean? This shit, the shit just elevated. It feels like it always elevated. You know what I mean? So shit's supposed to be where it's at. He was at this bullshit ass job for how long? 
but you know, he wasn't meant to be a maintenance guy. I mean, at, at our house now, yeah, you, you do your fucking, you do your thing, man. But, um, I, I, I don't want him to be a fucking maintenance man for his whole life. He's way too fucking talented to be picking up syringes and picking up garbage. What the fuck are you doing? And then he would, on his breaks, he would go edit someone's uh, album cover and then he's making the beat and then he's making someone's song and then he's a fucking editing a music video so he he was already like he was already doing shit on top of shit yeah man we we we, we been probably doing we probably was doing music the longest and putting the most in the music uh more than than anybody i know for the longest time without really getting a real substantial return off of it. The only return we would get was attention. And Nick never lost sight of his dream he was pursuing to make music. No matter where he moved or where he transitioned to, the studio transitioned with him. He was the only one that stuck with it, the only one that took it serious. It's a hustle. It's a hustle lifestyle. Uh, but he makes it work. Uh, He'll do whatever it takes to get where he needs to go. One day I asked him who his biggest fan was, and he said, Carlos. And I said, come on, how much does Carlos know about what you've been doing? How much does he listen to what you do? And I feel like I've been there from day one, if nothing else, being a fan. Because I'd love to see the growth. That's all Rand used to do, is, is listen to his shit and come up with shit, make beats after school. Like all through high school, it was it's 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 kind of dope looking back now, and just thinking, man, this guy's he's he's he hasn't stopped. He's been grinding this whole time. Rain was always interested in music in whole, not just rap, not just hip hop. He wouldn't just study rap or study hip hop. Rain would be studying uh, music in a whole. Schoolwork didn't do it. You know, all his notebooks just had lyrics in them. And obviously you're in seventh grade, you don't have it, you know, you don't have shit to talk about. His mind's always working, that's for sure. This guy never sleeps. His mind's always working, always thinking of the next thing, the next big thing, the next idea, whatever it is. I remember he drove to a, uh, he drove my car with me one time to base and uh, stationed down in Camp Pendleton. So we drove my Impala all the way down and this guy was in the car on the road with his laptop his whole setup and making beats making beats doing production editing music I'm like man I can't even text and drive this guy's in the passenger seat making full albums for people on a road trip like that's just the level of dedication this guy has there's no off time there's no off switch for him I mean, there's a reason this guy looks 60 years old and he's three years younger than me because he doesn't sleep. This motherfucker's always working and it shows. Like, I think it, for a lot of young kids too, looking look into that, everybody wants to do it. You know, people think it's a get rich quick. You're going to put out a song and you're going to get all this money when really it's 20 years of him going through all this shit. I, I, got, a, I got a good feeling about that he's gonna be doing big things in the future. And now we start bleeding. We're so done with this feeling. And I guess we're gonna say now we're better off alone. One of Nick's friends had a spot in Auburn, and I took the time to help my son out and help him build this studio. The place was pretty ratty to begin with, but we took care of that and built um, a custom booth. I don't know, it was probably five by five or something like that. 
Um, had a window in it, saw the door. You could probably let off a semi-automatic in there and nobody would ever hear it. My name is Evan Palmer. Uh, I go by Elijah Three, formerly Elijah Prophet. Um, I met Rain, shit, I would say maybe back in like 2017. People don't know is that I was I was the first customer at Pyramid Studios, so like he has the the new side. I was back over on the old side with the with the with the red theme studio. We built Pyramid Music Group, uh, mainly for us to have somewhere to just get away and to do our thing. That's what it started as. It just started as us being us having somewhere else to do our music and to get away, like a man cave type shit that we, that we share type shit, you know? And it ended up, we didn't, well, Rain always did want a studio. It wasn't like Rain didn't want a studio. Rain always wanted a studio. I always wanted a studio type, a studio in the barbershop. That's how we got to having it like we have it now. But in the beginning, when we first came to, to do the shit, it was just mainly to have somewhere for us to record and do our shit and to get away, a kick it spot for us to, to uh, to do the same thing we basically always have done. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But the same thing we've always done, even as kids. Even as, you know what I'm saying? Even as kids, when Rain had the little setup and Pops helped help us make the setup, build the first setup as kids. You know, being, uh, in high school, you know, we, there was always, we'd always go there, vent, come up with our shit. So we, as men, we basically wanted somewhere for us to, us to be able to go together and do the same thing that we shared, but on another level. And I mean, that's how it started and it ended up becoming so much bigger than that. I always felt like it, it, it could, and I always felt like it should, but I never knew that it would. So, I mean, uh, that's another great thing. And then all of the things that came out of it is, is even more amazing. Nick and his mom were real close, real close. I mean, he was kind of a mama's boy, but not outwardly so. They were just real close. He's uh, he's been through a lot of loss in his life, as well as uh, as a lot as as well as a lot of good things that have come to his life. I mean, it's hard to talk about, but when his mom passed away, um, he's always had the passion, but I saw a shift in the way he was making moves after she passed. I think it was, um, everything was, everything's always had a purpose, but I think like, I'm not gonna make this move unless it, it's taken me somewhere. Um, and I think that after she passed, everything kinda um, started happening for him. Uh, she's looking out for him for sure. I. I know that for a fact. I am, I know he hates when people are like, your mom's with you every everything you do. And he's like, but she's not <laughs> like, she's not here. She, you know, I mean, it's great to think about her like watching over me and like, but I think he behind everything he does, it's uh, to make her proud, whether she is here or she isn't here. And in 2016, Robin passed. Um, I'm not gonna touch on mom too much. Um, mom's always been there, mom's always been proud. Um, she used to tell us that all the time. Proud of you guys. That's it on that. And then everything uh, that he's gone through and he still pushes forward, you know, it's tough. I can't even imagine what he's going through right now with everything and uh, with his mom. That's got to be tough, you know. But even 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 during those times, this guy fought through. I don't know what to say about the time she was on top of the earth. Uh, I don't know. I was really trying not to touch on mom, but now it kind of fucked me up. <laughs> As his mom passed away a couple years, about three years ago now, 
So I've been trying to be even closer with Nick and Chris and to be there for them. I think I'm their favorite uncle, I'm not sure. I think mom would be really proud to see where we came. You know, we're both business owners, both doing well, both raising good kids. Um, yeah, I think she'd be happy to see how far we came. I don't know, but she sees it, you know, she knows. So we lucky, still got pops. Nick took that really hard, still does to this day. But it has also inspired some of his music. Yeah, I just, I just noticed something kind of switch in him after that happened and everything was like very had meaning behind it and was very purposeful and it he had a mission she was a good mom everybody loved Robin she took care of the kids she did a good job with the kids 